when you go out there and you sit down like this, and here's the quarterback right there, you can't see the defenders behind you. Try to use, like Tom does a good job of that. Like, so when you sit down, when he puts the ball over here, he's kind of telling you, you know, that there's somebody over there. Take the path the ball's taking you away from the defender. But I bet Belichick doesn't have a tree phone. Hello? Hey, just fine, just fine, but you're too late, you know? We drank the wine, we ate the crab. Meet Don Coriel, the coach behind an offense that even Belichick had trouble stopping in the early 80s. A wide open aerial assault led by Dan Fouts that became known as Air Coriel. Fouts again, steps up under pressure, throwing deep to Joyner. Great catch! Touchdown, Chargers! His legacy mm. is what we see every Sunday. You know, you see the spread now. He's splitting out a guy like Kelsey out wide, and that's basically what Winslow was doing. Looking in the end zone for Winslow. Touchdown! You see four, five wide receivers in the game at one time. I mean, we started doing that as well. All right, how do you stop them all, right? You've got two backs to cover, three receivers that have gained over 1,000 yards throughout the year. He looks at everybody, too, doesn't he? OK, listen, we're going downtown now, so give me extra time. We send out five guys every, every time. And not one of those five guys felt he was the primary. Any one of those five is capable of being the receiver. So that kept them on alert. You get five guys running full yeah. speed every play. Every play. And that, that puts a lot of pressure on the defense. For Coriel, any time is the right time to put the ball in flight. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Air Coriel and your pilot, Dan Fouts, welcome to San Diego. Get ready to roll, baby! For an NFL record six consecutive years, Air Coriel boasted the number one passing offense in the league. San Diego has the best offense in the National Football League this year and, in my opinion, ever. Fouts averaged nearly 300 yards passing per game, throwing to the likes of Charlie Joyner, tight end Kellen Winslow, John Jefferson, and later Wes Chandler. My fa one of my favorite players uh, growing up. My, my, too, yeah. my favorite team is West Chandler. <laughs> Your favorite team? West Chandler. I threw a lot of bad balls. He made a lot of good catches. Right. You know. Wow. Set. Throws it in the end zone for Chandler. He's got it on his knees. Touchdown, San Diego. I, I really didn't make myself clear. Well, I, th I think I understood you. Yeah. Is, is that what you wanted, a yeah, touchdown? I, I, I <laughs> Our best day of the week sometimes was Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I love Wednesday. When we got the plan, mm -hmm. you know, we'd put the tape on and go, well, they can't cover that one. Mm -hmm. They can't cover that one. And there'd be times we'd go down the field and score the first drive. Second drive, we'd go down and kick a field goal. It's like 10 nothing and everything. And I'd tell the boys in the huddle, I said, we're going to get 50 today. Because once we start scoring, no telling when we'll stop, huh? Many of today's pass-happy teams run a version of Air Coriel. The rest run some version of Bill Walsh's West Coast offense. I brought a bunch of Walsh's old coaching tapes to the 49ers Museum in Santa Clara, hoping to meld with the mind behind the 49ers' five Super Bowls. We had a very, very young team, more rookies than any team in the National Football League. I even sat at his old desk, across from a living legend come to life. Wow, Coach Walsh had really good taste. It's nicer on that side of the desk. Joe, we're in a museum, but is this office pretty accurate? Yeah, it's pretty close. Um, I typically was more looking right at Bill when I was in there. <laughs> I was afraid to look around. Yeah. Did you know Bill was recording all of his meetings? And if they're in man coverage, you catch it and go. I mean, he's like Richard Nixon. I mean, yeah, no. making all these recordings. Didn't know he was doing it, but it's pretty typical of Bill because he was always thinking ahead. I mean, he was a big preparation guy. Again, if you get in trouble over there, Joe, come right back to the Y. We spend more time studying off the field than practicing on the field, and that was his biggest thing, being prepared for every situation, understanding what's being called, why it's being called, how he expects you to go through your progression. If we go in motion here and are softening way up, we'll hit our half back and he'll turn up the sideline. If they're widening, Dwight gets inside and we hit him. Now we swing up the field and are ready for the lateral. It really became a thing about perfection with him. Wait a minute, just, just wait a second. A double circle out should be a flat. He wanted you to be perfect, Yeah. even in practice. He yeah. wanted you to step on the field and make every throw. 
throw the ball a foot in front of the numbers. Made you just more aware of your accuracy and yeah. how we wanted the ball. That looks great. So we will just throw the ball right up over this spot right there, right there. Just to the outside over the top of the head. Right over this way, right there. But the thing about Walsh that stood out to me on those videos, hold on, Joe, somebody's coming. Do me a favor, freeze, act like you're a statue. All right, they're gone. So the attention to detail, that was, that was his thing, right? That was it. I asked Joe to go deeper. So we fired up the film projector to explore how Walsh and his offense launched a dynasty. Any idea where the term West Coast offense originated? I mean, did Bill Walsh call it the West Coast offense or he just call it the 49er offense? Huh? Uh, I, I think he called it his offense. Because <laughs> <laughs> they did a lot of that, the same types of things when he was in Cincinnati. That's right. Bill Walsh spent eight years as an assistant coach in Cincinnati under Paul Brown. Bill, what do you like next year? They just make sure you have the ball. Then one year as Dan Fouts' offensive coordinator in 1976. Now this time, Carter, it's really snap your head around, Dan. All the while developing a precision passing game that would become known as the West Coast offense. If you hand the ball off to a running back and they get four yards, what is everybody saying? Oh, you can't give up four yards. But throw the ball to the oh, underneath guy, yeah. they stop him for four yards, and they're all going, OK, great, we stopped it. Same four yards, yeah. right? Next thing you know, you're down the field, and they're going, wait, how'd they get here? For Rice, he's got a touchdown, 49 It is a possession type offense. I mean, we always tried to work the ball down the field, yeah. but you don't need to force it. Uh, Joe, any questions about this? Just hit one of these two backs along the sideline. They'll sit down three yards and a half. They're going to get you eight to 10 yards. Especially if you look downfield and hold the ball, everybody keeps giving ground and suddenly they're wide open. Read, read what you see. Just use your judgment. For a quarterback, he gives you options and he gives you a place to go as a hot. Like, I'm going to give you a guy this way, but if this guy takes it away, I'm going to give you two more. And if you don't like that, I'm going to give you another back over here. Answers. Answers to almost everything. Just complete control of the offense, knowing where the third and fourth receivers are. It's a clinic. But as Paul Brown would say, we're a precision machine. That was our personality, a machine that just effectively and precisely destroyed the opponent. Touchdown, Rice! Brilliant game plan for Bill Walsh. Everything has been to perfection. Watching these tapes, I started to understand what set great coaches like Walsh apart. He thought of everything. You've got to have everybody 100% fresh for this ball game. Somehow, you've got to be fresh. In some cases, it may mean a lot of sex. In others, none. I don't know. <laughs> we're down the field. We're a pass receiver. We're wide open. The ball is not thrown to us. We don't go like that, like that, walk around like that, trying to attract attention to yourself. Get the hell back in the huddle. So don't wave to the crowd that you were open because we don't want the other team to realize it. You just don't see that type of attention to detail yeah. being covered. And he's saying, is, I like this part right here. The same thing, more importantly, is a sack. When you get a sack, get back into the crowd and mill around. We don't want the other team to know who made, made the sack. <laughs> and the other team began to wonder where in the hell the problem is. There's nobody <laughs> doing that in today's game. No. Right? <laughs> no you make you, a sack now. Yeah, you yeah. made it very clear. Yeah, yeah. And you're making it very clear also that you were wide open if you didn't get the ball. Oh! Hold it! But yeah, no, he wanted none of that. He had no send, part of any send of this, things. Send this tape to all NFL teams. <laughs> this is the only sport with in our society that brings everybody together. Every racial group, every economic group, different educational backgrounds, different ages. Somehow, the sport of football brings everybody together and gives us all a chance to prove to the rest of this country that people can live together and work together. I'm glad that Bill Walsh made those tapes, that Don Coriel took to the skies, and maybe even that Paul Brown insisted on calling his own plays. The NFL wouldn't be the same if players did the coaching. And that's why we should all be grateful that George Hallis missed the boat. He's not on this boat, and the NFL 
Well, was what it is today. Eli and I ought to thank God it was late. Amen. He started the NFL. Amen.